boys here. Welcome back to the internet's number one fake history podcast, The Lore Boys. I'm your host, Ethan Palmer, taking you back today to the world of Albion to cover more of Lionhead Studios' Fable series. Uh, with me, of course, is James Miller. Hello, I'm here for this one. And wow. mother's maiden name is, we were just talking about it. Okay, enough for <laughs> and <that>. of course. <laughs> yeah, give me your mother's maiden name so I can change all your passwords. <laughs> and and uh, Peter O'Donohue. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Peter. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome to new listeners. You, you new listener who we've never, we, who's never heard us before. Welcome to the show. So one thing I was going to add to the last one, I was going to be like, hey, is this like the MMO Albion Online? Is it related to Fable? And I Googled it myself. It just not at all. Not at all. No, yeah, no. No. I mean, you guys have never heard of Albion. I've been on the show. Yeah. You said it's Britain, right? Britain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For for Great Britain, I think. Um, It was like a Greek term for the island that the Romans had tried to invade or or whatever. Yeah. I, Gauls in France. Oh, is it? I think so. The Galois. Okay. The Galois. Yeah. Okay. Well, Fable. I'm very excited. I played some Fable since the last time. Not very much, but uh, enough to uh, to remember how the game works a little bit. And, and yeah. Just... Yeah. Uh, I guess off the top, thanks to Chris, Wooly Bully, and Matthew for the the new and updated pledges on Patreon. Uh, you guys continue support for the show. Uh, makes it all worth it. Keeps lights running. Is very much appreciated, and we love you for it. Enjoy the. What about the the guy you left out here with tomorrow? the best name? <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Shedrick Young. Oh, he wasn't. He wasn't in my Patreon notifications. Oh no. Why. No. Because oh. uh, so I checked I, right before the show. Do we recognize these names? Because I think you guys mentioned that there's a way if you just canceled your sub and resubbed over and over again, you could just sneak in on every episode. Yeah. Are well, the the Discord veteran. So he's been around for a while. Um, okay. Maybe. Uh, Shedrick Young and Matthew. I mean, Matthew's a fairly common name, but. Yeah. Shedrick might be Shedrick might be uh, Willy Bully. Who knows? And yeah. it was an updated pledge. So I don't know what Shedrick did. What's yeah, Shedrick cool. done for you recently? Except for subscribe to the Lore Boy. Apparently, uh, you guys want to pay for my show. <laughs> if you guys want to become a patron, uh, there is a link in the description below. You guys can get access to a uh, fun game called The Loser Titles. You guys can get access to bonus content. We we sometimes upload scripts whenever we remember to. Uh, and if there's one that you want, you can always request it. Um, so we did a part one on Fable, which covered kind of the prehistory of Albion, the old kingdom, as it was called. Uh, basically, everything leading up to the first game. Uh, on this episode, we'll be going into detail on specific neat things that you can find in the game. Specifically, Balverines and Demon Doors are the two things that we're pretty much going to talk oh. about. Oh, right. Yeah. You I, yeah, uh, like Demon if this, Doors. If this is your first episode, you absolutely don't need to listen to the the last one. It might just help because we might make jokes <laughs> tied to it. Like, <laughs> I wasn't about, there. About either, England so. and French. Okay, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so me and Pete talked about uh, how I've played Fable 1. Pete had only played Fable 2 and 3, so we, we covered all bases, thankfully. But uh, Jamie, what about yourself? What's what's your, your history with the Fable series? So I played Fable 1. You asked on the show, you're like, or you didn't ask, you weren't sure. You're like, I th- either played on the original Xbox or the Xbox 360. You played on the original Xbox because I played your copy of Fable 1. There you go. I, I borrowed it from your place and brought it home to my original Xbox and played it in my room. And I think I also played Fable 3, which I thought I borrowed from you uh, for the Xbox 360, but I must have rented it. Um, Yeah. So I've played one in Video Zone. Yeah. Um, I don't remember two at all. uh, So I think I just played one in three. Yeah. Uh, One, I played more than three. Yeah. Yeah. Three is the one where you're like a king, and two is the one where you're not. But in both, you have a dog. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. Uh, starting off with my whole family being killed in Fable One, which is uh, yeah. a very memorable start for yeah for, for a little Xbox age. game, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little Xbox game where you're playing as a kid becomes a hero, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, f- the Fable games. If you guys haven't listened to the last episode, it's like a traditional fantasy motif. I, I think when it comes to like a lot of the world design and, and things like that, there's kings and queens and heroes and magic and you know, uh, kind of traditional fantasy monsters like the Balverine, who we're going to talk about later, who's essentially a werewolf. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, to start, since this is like the most requested aspect of Fable, specifically uh, in the Lord Boys Discord, is, is the Demon Doors. We'll start with, with them. Nice. Um, definitely, for me, 
the most memorable thing about the Fable games. It's like the thing I remember best is absolutely the Demon Doors. And I, I, I was watching some like gameplay today on, on some like Easter eggs. And I like forgot what like the UI looked like. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and kind of like how jacked you could get your character in the original Fable. Like you can make him like a big muscle guy. Yeah. Uh, and like all these things I forgot about. But the Demon Doors have always st- like stuck with me so, so well. There's that first um, one in the the major or in the heroes, heroes guild. guild. Yeah, you, there's one right away, and yeah. you obviously can't get through it yet, but you just gotta like, or maybe yeah, you can. I don't remember. No, but. There's one right outside the heroes guild which you can't get through yet, which we'll we'll talk about. Yeah. Um, and then there's one uh in the heroes guild that you have to get through as part of the tutorial, where it's like you have to light a lantern. Uh, essentially, you have a lantern in your inventory, you have to pull it out and, and light. Right. It. And there's a bunch uh, of stuff you have to do in the Heroes Guild. There's like someone who's like, oh, race me to this one place and then I'll give you a, a silver a yeah. pence or whatever the fuck. And and this was like very, like this was mid aughts. Pick up uh, apples. Yeah, this was the mid aughts. So it was very much the, um, like the heyday of like traditional, very, like very Let's descriptive see. tutorials, you know, and quests. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. It was very much like, here's your, here's your tutorial area where you're going to go over every aspect of the game and like a, a basic level detail right here's a um, run there's i remember on pc i was trying to do the archery thing like there's an achievement for getting like a perfect score on the archery mm-hmm. and i was having the hardest time with it <laughs> i was like how as a kid was i expected to do this like yes. ever uh, and then I there's mean, another one where you fight like your rival and you have to never get hit and i i did that one but it was kind of tough and, yeah yeah, so the Demon Doors, I Googled them because, of course, I, I never played the first one. I have, like, dreamlike memories of watching it at friends' places, right? I'm sitting in the chair in the hotel room. But mm-hmm. I know they reminded me always of Jack of the Green from Medieval, who is, like, a riddle-giving stone head. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to specify Googling Jack of the Green uh, on go- uh, that it is from the game Medieval because I just want to send you guys the uh, first result I got here if you want to just Ooh. describe that quickly. <laughs> It looks a lot like a demon door. He's oh. like a big stone face with like uh, like green yeah. leaves kind of like blossoming out of his head, basically. Yeah. And the guy before that looks like he took colloidal silver, but it turned him green instead of blue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just an old British guy wearing a crown full of reeds and he has oh. like a green suit on and his face is spray painted green to above the collar. So you can see his pasty white skin above the collar of his shirt. Yeah. I Not go to whatever. To Whatever dinner party this is, I want to be at it. Yeah, same. Yeah. We're all different colors. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's got the- Justin Trudeau's like lazily spray painted black. This guy's lazily spray painted green. <laughs> uh, and Jamie, you say, how are you supposed to as a kid beat it? I mean, the original fable was rated M for mature because you could get married. You could have sex. You could kill oh. people. You could make get drunk. Mor- morally great choices. You get drunk, like all these different things. So you never were supposed to beat it as a kid. You weren't even <laughs> supposed to be playing it. You're... Your mother did a bad job letting you borrow it from me. Oh, by uh, the way, <laughs> I was at my dad's place. I'm willing to, be, to blame my dad. Um, <laughs> uh, um, there's an achievement in the first game called like Ass's Creed, and you find an assassin and you have to fart on him. And he's, <laughs> <laughs> and he's dressed, he's dressed yeah, like right. Altair, I guess. And, yeah. And there's, it just makes fun of Ubisoft. There's like an emote wheel, which is probably the first. Um, the first game that I remember having, like an emote wheel, with a uh, lot of emotes, like you had to set them to the wheel because there was like an overwhelming amount of things you could do, oh, and like yeah, you, you unlock like, press people, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you can like you can get people to like you, and again, you can like get married, which is like you can give people gifts, or you can uh, like do certain emotes with them, and like you'll unlock like kind of like The Sims, you'll unlock like different emotes based on how much they like you or right, dislike yeah. you. Um, yeah. One of the uh, you could get titles, so you start off as Chicken Chaser. Uh, uh, the classic, here goes the Chicken Chaser chasing the chickens, is what like the yeah. villagers would say to you as you uh, as you walk past. To get the arse face um, uh, eponym, you needed to like uh, lower your reputation with like most people. You needed to like lower your social standing essentially by just like farting a lot or like scratching your crotch a lot, and then people would would say, "There goes Oz face as you, yeah. as you ran. Back. <laughs> I like the Xbox game that your parents let you play way too young has a, a, a scratch your crotch and smell it emote. That's just very. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, oh man, you're yeah. It's like you're sitting on the bus. You're like one of those weird guys who's like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you've played the intro a few times, like one of the first things you do after you leave the Heroes Guild is you have to go get rid of some wasps that are plaguing a park. And the anniversary edition on Steam has a bunch of different mods that changes the the wasps. And one of my <laughs> favorites is changes them all to Shreks. 
So oh, like, fine. <laughs> there's a bunch of like little flapping Shreks. And then once you beat them, the big honking flapping Shrek comes up from over the horizon. <laughs> you to You're coming at you. Take him out and it's great. I just bumped my mic. Hopefully the with the new bot, I can take out my can part. Fix, we'll see. Fix your we'll goober. See. You uh, guys may or now, may not hear it. Yeah, this conversation will either be uh, evidence of Jamie's failure or his success. Yep. <laughs> here. Yep. Um, Check yeah, out Patreon so, if you want to hear all of our mic taps. Actually, we upload those in- individually. It's just an uh, it just as a cut up string of just like. We'll be like the Blue Man Group, who we talked about on the the bonus content, yeah. where we'll just like play steel like uh, an oil an oil barrel as like an instrument or something like that. Yeah, look up colloid- colloid- yeah, look up colloidal silver, and you might just find a Blue Man. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. So, so we're talking about demon doors. One of the demon, do- demon doors actually you have to do like a series of emotes to like get it to open. Um, so <laughs> one of them you have to like marry the fattest woman in town and bring yeah. her to like it's, have, it's like the married. weird. There's <laughs> one you have to get married. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so in our first episode, we covered the rise and fall of the old kingdom. Essentially, it was just like very very high magic run by these people called archons uh like kingdom which eventually was destroyed when the ta- when the spire was was completed um it's during this period that all the demon doors we know of were created how they came to be remains pretty shrouded in mystery we know that they were essentially like created via will um like like created by magic in, in the world essentially um we know that all of them except for one that we know of are made out of stone with this, uh, with like, a, they all have male faces in the first one. They all have the exact same face. Um, we know, we, we kind of know which one was the first. We have it narrowed down to two different doors. Essentially. One of them was, was likely the first. Um, I guess we could talk about, about what they are. So I talked about uh, being able to unlock, like open one with a, uh, a series of emotes. Essentially they're just magic doors. Like I said, um, since they're made of stone, I guess uh, if you really want to be drinking during this podcast, you could say magic rocks because they're definitely magic. And they're made, of, uh, they're made of rock. So uh, not not in the traditional sense, but um, they always feature a prominent human face. Each has a distinct personality. So uh, they have varying levels of intelligence. Some can barely string sentences together and speak in broken English, while others are like very sophisticated. There's one of them who claims to have been the most famous playwright in all of Albion at one time. Oh, cool. Uh, so there, there's going to be a lot of Lore Boys canon in this episode. Uh, I might have mentioned it in last week's episode that the Fable Wiki um, or the Fable <laughs> fandom is like, God, God bless it for helping us out. It's not well sourced. And I, I had a really hard time like tracking down a lot of sources for a lot of stuff. I basically had to rely on like videos of Demon Door interactions for, for a lot of the <laughs> veracity in this episode. I heard that there was a powerful wizard that got stuck in one too. He used to just be called Dumble. Uh, now, 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 right, now he's now he's the Dumble Demon Door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's it seems like they were either once living, breathing people, or like this door managed to to dictate plays to somebody who like wrote them down. I guess. Um. I think the former theory is like is more interesting and probably more verifiable. It's one of those um, things like it, it, one of the leading theories and if in like kind of like fringe literature studies is just like well actually shakespeare was multiple talking doors using this <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's like a legion of talking doors that that wrote uh romeo and juliet jesus yeah. said shakespeare and juliet like that was the the name of the freaking play eh? <laughs> shakespeare yeah. wishes yeah so uh <laughs> it seems most most demon doors were at one point human um they have plenty of human qualities from their appearance like it's a human face to their personalities like we kind of just talked about um they're usually guarding a treasure of one sort or another and to enter them you they'll usually present a challenge such as uh, answering a riddle battling some enemies or just getting fat enough to amuse the door like the the <laughs> door in the old kingdom spring from fable one i have a quote yep. uh, when you talk to the door this is what he says to you oh no not again Another bony adventurer sinking to plunder my riches. I'm not interested in your meager frame. Get some meat on you. I want beefy, blubbery, plump, porcine. Stop being a slave to public perception and treat yourself. I eat beer anything, but lots of it. Eat yourself large and you'll be welcome here. Uh, Body positivity door dies of heart disease at 38. Like. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, we'll get into what happens when a demon door dies in a, a little bit later in this episode. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, so like these personalities, they seem to want something. Who defines like how to get in uh, does seem to be able to change over time. It seems like the doors are the ones setting the condition more than the person who created the door. If the it's possible that the doors themselves are like personality copies of somebody as well. Like it might not be like a human soul inhabiting the door, but maybe they just like make a copy of your consciousness to be the personality for the door. Like an um, impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Know. It's it's all untold. Um, but like this one just wants to see a fat person, whereas other ones are like all only open for Nostro, the guy who who founded the the Heroes Guild. Um, if there's I another. Was- my soul is in a door. I'd be a chubby chaser door, hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go out to the bar, and uh, when a skinny girl comes up to you, ask her to be more poor sign. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> door at the yeah. bar like rotates on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, would somebody show this creep the door already? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's another door which says he'll only open to someone who knows his name, which you can find in a nearby temple. You basically ask somebody in a nearby temple. So these, uh, there's these stones. There's like four stones uh, near the door, which have letters on them. Uh, and you can spell out his name by hitting the four stones. H-I-T-S. His name is Hits. Uh, the anagram, uh, the puzzle enthusiasts in the crowd might realize that you can also spell shit with that. Uh, <laughs> if, if you spell shit, the door summons two Balverines to attack you. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, and this, for that matter. Yeah, what I, I mentioned earlier that that like demon doors was one of the most like memorable thing. It's the absolute thing that stuck the most with me from the entire Shit. Fable series. Um, I I was amazed at how few doors there are. I didn't write down the actual number, but there's like like nine or ten in the first game. I was like, I was sure there would have been like thirty. Like just as a oh. kid, probably like experiencing this world, thinking there's like oh, there's so many. You know, I went through like the entire list in all three games and I, I there's really not that many i was just Holy like shit. Quite, quite surprised i yeah. saw three or four in my like five hours of gameplay but maybe like i i explored a lot or something well when as a kid right so this go this goes back because again they look like jack of the green from medieval and i remember like playing medieval as a child and having a hell of a time having literally never beaten it my my neighbor who owned it had to beat it for me and then playing it as an adult because I got it and a PS1 at the same like vintage store for $20 total for both. I beat the entire game in eight and a half hours. And my mother, who hadn't played a video game in 25 years, beat it in nine hours. So it's yeah. just like when you're a child, you're just an idiot. Like that's why the puzzles <laughs> are the thing you remember is because you yeah. can't remember how to spell hits because you're too distracted spelling shit. Yeah, and that's exactly. why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in the in the first game, there's 15. That's including three from the DLC. Uh, or from the exp- the expansion pack. Uh, in the second one, there's nine, and in the third one, there's six. Wow! I don't remember them in the second and third at all. Not six. Or, nothing. So there's so few, uh, like so much fewer than I remember. I just remember there being like this. Oh, there's demon doors everywhere, you know, in this huge open world, and I'm sure it feels so much smaller if I if I were to play it now. Yeah. Um, so in the in the DLC of the first fable called the Lost Chapters, you can find a demon door known as the Primal Demon Door, which guards something called the Prophet's Chamber. Uh, and something called the fire heart which is stored within and this is like key to the game this is the demon door outside the uh, heroes guild which you can't open yet you it's oh. it's a dlc demon door apparently oh. orig- originally it was intended to hold the what was intended as the original final boss called trogdor uh the burninator huh. i guess but yeah, um, <laughs> so, yeah uh, go burn- go look up uh what wh- Homestar Runner. Homestar, yeah. if you if you're too young for that that's where just, trogdor just, comes from just cool is it Trogdor or Trogzor? I think it's Trogzor. Trogdor. No, it's Trogdor for sure. I have loud friends who are named Trogdor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think um, the Lost Chapters were like cut content because the game was too big or taking too long to finish for release on the OG Xbox. Like there's yeah. a couple of old expansions. Of course, now they do that um, flagrantly where the, or maybe that's kind of stopped. They flagrantly just like leave content you need to pay for on the disc because they're pricks, huh. right? Back yeah. in the day, Technology had limitations, so the developer had to make the sacrifices and not your credit card. <laughs> yeah, they would exactly. cut that stuff out and like post release it down the line after figuring out like audio compression or some shit. It, I was just from the like couple hours I played last week or whatever. It's really cool because I went to a city and I ran into a girl that's in the beginning of the game, and you can choose to save her teddy bear or not, mm-hmm. or like find her teddy bear before your whole village burns down. 
And if you did, then you run into her in the city and she's like, you're the guy who saved my teddy bear. I remember you from all these years ago. And I, I guess if you didn't save the teddy bear, you might get a different response. Did you fart in her face afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't, yeah. if you didn't save her teddy bear, she goes, there goes all face. <laughs> <laughs> Does it get yeah, no, I mean, buff? Uh, well, I'm playing the anniversary edition. It's good. Okay. Uh, it looks fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the, uh, we talked about it a bit on the last week's episode too, where, uh, that was kind of, that feels like Peter Molyneux's like goal with it was like actions have consequences, right? Like that's kind of the theme of the whole yeah. game is that what you do should matter. Um, yeah. I'll say the combat is kind of boring. Um, but like maybe I have it on too easy or something, but there's like every mission you do, you can add like modifiers to the missions to make them harder. Oh, cool. And I always just put all the mod like all mods. it's like do it do it naked with only your bow. And I'll be like, mm-hmm. all right. This, and then it's just like easy. It, there's no challenge. Yeah. I remember the lock on with yeah. the bow hop animation is goofy, right? It's like a whoa, ho, 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 ho. like you're like hopping sideways or something. Or is that a different game? Uh, I'm remembering. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't okay. remember either. I, it's first person whenever whenever I'm using the bow, I go to first person mode. Oh, OK. Yeah. So uh, this door, the primal demon door might be the first one. Just it's called the primal demon door, which kind of would make sense. It's kind of implied that this might have been created by William Black, like the first Archon, the first like will user. Um, But the Fairfax demon door in Fable 2 straight up claims to be the first demon door. Uh, And there's some supporting evidence there, too. Would you Um, trust a demon door, though? This one, this one claims to be made by William Black, but yeah, they're human personalities. They can lie. They like they absolutely do lie sometimes. Uh, we get some examples um, in Fable Three. There's a door which says it'll only open to the King or Queen of Albion. It gives you a million gold whenever you access it. Oh. So I guess that Demon Door's whole thing is the rich get richer tr- trickle down economics. That's the, <laughs> the spirit, the spirit of Reagan in, in a Demon Door. <laughs> uh, no, if Reagan was a Demon Door, he'd be a chubby chaser too. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> you need so, to bring me the throat goat of Albion. Is what that's. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> what isn't that his wife though? Nancy Reagan throat goat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, the door um, wouldn't have it unless she's locked inside, and that's your reward, right? That's the treasure. Yeah. Yeah, you can marry Nancy Reagan if you open that demon yeah. door. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so they were definitely made in the old kingdom. Like none of them are, are the secret to how to make them is is seemingly lost. Uh, who made them? How for each door is unknown. Uh, Fairfax Garden Door that I just mentioned about also claims he was made by the first Archon, Willie Black. Um, it seems all the doors have some requirement to open and will open even when they don't necessarily want to. So the Brightwood Door is extremely reluctant to open for the hero. It tries to warn warn you off by saying there's a gas leak at first. Uh, <laughs> eventually, it uh, it like and then you fart on it and you and then it lets you in. <laughs> no, it, it, <laughs> it says there's a gas leak. And then if you persist, it sends you to go get some cheese. And then if you persist, I think it's the one that, that makes you do the series of, of emotes to get in. Okay. Uh, if they are persistent. Oh, yeah, they- even be in like a medieval setting. Like I know there's like the, the stories about like ancient Greece, how like the uh, what, what's that? The fortune teller woman, whatever she was called. Delphi. It's just like the, 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 the Oracle of Delphi. That's it. Yeah. She was like, oh, yeah, there's just like a crack in the ground that like noxious fumes were leaking up through mm-hmm. that was making her hallucinate basically and like telling spartans to go die or or oh, whatever yeah. but, like what would a gas leak be in the context of fable would it be the same thing Cause it's not like they have wood they don't have the like, gas powered anything right i mean a lot of the humor is very tongue-in-cheek it's very like, meta yeah it's very uh, there's yeah. there's plenty of meta jokes and like there's plenty of like easter eggs and stuff like that so i think i think that's all this was intended to be was yeah. just like a something that the audience could relate to more like more dramatic irony than than like in game yeah. like yeah. canon it's for um, it's very Shrek, work, i guess yeah speaking, exactly. uh, on the subject of mods yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, the demon door, if you persist, it tells you to get some cheese. Uh, as the door says that there's a, a cheese famine going on right now, and he wants to secure his supply. When you return with the cheese, uh, oh no, you don't do you don't do emotes. The door then insists that you hero that, that the hero dresses himself up as ridiculously as po- ridiculously as possible. So it makes you go out and get like the ugliest, most like clashing garments, and like put them all on, and like change your <laughs> hairstyle and change your beard and everything just to get in. Uh, because he believes that no self-respecting hero would do so, do so just to get into the into the demon door. Oh, he's never met a gamer, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the demon door also says, like, once you get in, the demon door basically says, like, oh, well, I used to have, like, really good treasure, but, like, I don't anymore. And so, because that's, like, all the canon that we get from it, essentially, it's it's either that 
that that's true. It used to have good treasure, but it's been looted in the past and then was closed again. Uh, at, or it's just embarrassed by the fact that there's like graves inside and you could just rob one of the graves and you get a prostitute's outfit. That's like the treasure behind <laughs> this, this demon door. <laughs> I so, like it. So it's like outfit that male prostitutes in the game can sometimes be seen wearing. Um, <laughs> That's right. the leather daddy door. And he's too ashamed to come out, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, what would be really weird about if the demon door was robbed, was actually robbed, is that most demon doors, uh, like 90, 90%, we'll say, uh, don't close again after you open them. They just remain open for the rest of the game. You can always return. There's a few exceptions. That primal demon door that we talked about before, that one does close again, and you're you're unable to revisit that location, the, the prophet's chamber. Um, but that's more just like a story reason it, it feels like than anything. Like you have okay. to go get the firestone there, and it's like main 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 quest energy, I guess. Um, whereas most of the other ones just kind of remain open and you can no longer interact with like the face or the door or the personality or anything. It's like their task is done, right? Yeah, exactly. So the the Fairfax Garden door, the one uh, claiming to be the first demon door made by William Black, the condition to open that that door is to first open all other demon doors in Fable Two. Okay. Uh, when you have an when you have opened all the other doors and finally opened the Fairfax door, it makes a comment about the other doors and says they're probably having a great time without him, and he's he decides to go join them if only to ruin their fun. So he's basically mm. like, oh, I bet, I bet all the other demon doors are having a great time with, are just having a great time without me. I, I should go join them just to like ruin their fun or whatever. Now so that's what doors. Yeah, just, that's what purgatory is. You just get have to be a door until a, a boy dresses up like a male sex worker and then you can <laughs> go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it is like Valhalla for doors, but it's just like, yeah, I saw my, I, I died on the battlefield staring at a leather daddy farting in my face. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yes, a, 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 the king of doors death. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, you, that's purgatory. But then after somebody opens you, you go to door purgatory, it seems like. So the, the door consciousnesses, once a hero has solved the requirements for entry, depart from their stone coil and their spirit leaves the frame. One Where door do opens, another window closes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. One, one door opens, a retirement home opens is, is actually how it goes. So in okay. Fable 3, there's a demon door in, in Mist Peak Valley. If the player completes the requirements and opens the door, beyond they find a, an area called the Demon Door Retirement Home. Oh, what? So uh, Yeah, so in this place, you can find some of the demon doors opened in Fable 1 and 2. The Brightwood Demon Door, the, which complained about the gas leak and asked for some cheese. Uh, it explains that the cheese request was just made up on the spot as it just panicked and didn't want the hero to enter as it was ashamed, ashamed of the contents within. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's hilarious what does it look like did, did you were you able to look it up because like i'm picturing a bunch of mario 64 thwomps like sitting around a table yeah like, yeah, just and like a no hall. Frames. yeah uh, no it's just like it's like a misty like valley i guess and there's just okay. like these like doors like set into they are set into the walls or whatever but yeah okay, the doors are just kind of around um a lot of the, the doors just like talk out loud they mumble to themselves they 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 generally act like old folks in a retirement home home like they're just they're babbling like incoherently and just kind of like making up stories and trying to get your attention they don't even um, have one of those like elderly like swingers cruises or anything fun like that's bullshit yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um yeah again uh, how why they decide to retire when like the the player character like it, it's probably just like main main character you know energy or whatever um because in the first game there's a character called the archaeologist who you find behind a demon door like he's hiding in a demon door because he's hiding from jack of blades he's like one of the the main characters in the in the storyline mission the archaeologist and you end up finding him behind a demon door which like implies he was able to open it and then close it behind him until you showed up sort of thing right, right. um which you could say like, oh, he's he's an archaeologist, so, uh, so he studies the old kingdom. So maybe he knew some trick to doing it without like triggering the the requirement or something like that. But I don't know. It just or feels like uh, you show up, lose a bunch of weight inside the door, and then it closes. It right? closes because you're <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or he he got in and then he lifted the treasure off of the thing, and the button went up, and the door just closed behind him. Like, uh, okay. yeah. Oh, the, and, the, it, yeah, and the Indiana Jones hat is still on this side. That's how you know that archaeologist is inside. So, right. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, and he's just playing with the balls in there. Yeah, um, the big, that's a big ball. That's a big ball, baby. That's uh, like that Crash Bandicoot level, um, Boulder Dash. 
Oh yeah. It, he had to do the same one. Oh. Yeah. Just to complete it. He had to play uh crash bandicoot on the PS one in order <laughs> yeah. to get, get through that demon door, <laughs> <laughs> which was weird for an Xbox exclusive that they allowed. That, you know? It was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was the times were different back then. Yeah. Uh, so for their purpose, it seems each was made in the old kingdom to serve a specific function. Many are used to guard treasure, though those created in the Old Kingdom proper may have once served another purpose. So you can kind of visit locations in the Old Kingdom in Fable 2 and 3. Uh, and there's demon doors there, which like that might have been a temple in the Old Kingdom that now isn't be is obviously isn't a temple. And the demon doors seem to find reasons to close. Like I said before, they seem to set their own requirements to some extent. And probably because they they have like human personalities they do seem to like change over time as well like if you've been alive for thousands of years you probably maybe just don't even remember like what you were originally set to guard or what the original instructions were or who to let through <laughs> um, imagine you like have to go to the bathroom really bad right and you go in and you open up the door you close yeah. it behind you you sit down it's just like a normal bathroom and the toilet's right in front of the door you sit down in the toilet and there's just a big face on the inside of the <laughs> <door>. <laughs> just watching you uh, uh yeah you're just like you go you run up to the demon door you're like oh is there is there a public bathroom in there that i could use sir <laughs> sir and the door's like yeah absolutely just swings wide open and then you're like you rush in you sit on the toilet you're like that's strange usually you have to like pass some tests he's like yeah, I only open for people who really have to go to the bathroom. Then like closes as slowly closes as you're taking the shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to pinch it off halfway so you can just squeeze yeah, it out again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, there's a a door in Wraith Marsh. Uh, it has a book inside it called The Knights of Barrent, which talks about uh, talks of an outcast necromancer who created these like it's a terracotta army essentially. The book itself is called like Terry Cotter's uh, Book of Something. Yeah, um yeah but they're like what is a sol- terracotta armor Ar- terracotta, army. the terracotta army is like a, a relic of uh in, of some chinese dynasty where like it's these uh soldiers made out of clay that were like buried underground essentially it's like uh, an army of clay soldiers yeah, uh, i've only ever heard system of a down to say terracotta pie and i didn't know what terracotta means <laughs> that's so, what they were it, eating yeah terracotta is a, a terracotta pie basically <laughs> is what is that, that that was one of in uh in the art of war is the two things that you need to Feed your armies uh, bananas yeah. and terracotta pie. <laughs> yeah, if your if your opponent is quick to rise, you eat eat a terracotta pie and then make fun of them or something. Yeah, yeah. or the yeah. mushroom people that uh, yeah. whatever the that that lyric is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this this door the the um, the terracotta uh, the the wraith marsh door uh, seems like it might have been created to imprison the necromancer and these like aberrant knights that he created um which means like that was like the original purpose but then to open it you just need to show up with like the max followers which is 10 followers it's just like might might imply that like oh maybe the door got got lonely after the the night stopped responding <laughs> Aww. um the oakfield door oakfield door excuse me uh contains the land of homestead behind it which is this idyllic world created purely by will users in the old kingdom uh some doors it seems are just made as like effective gates like they were just like a way to like some like some are seems to be prison cells some to seem to just be like this is how you gain entrance and not just anybody can gain entrance um not to carry on with the uh system like i now i'm just saying that like the it's it's just system of a down that like runs albion because that would be the most loneliest door of my life (laughs) (laughs) he's just by himself sorry i had to get that one out there (laughs) um so yeah like i was saying uh, some requirements to enter may change over the years the litchfield graveyard demon door which you have to bypass to complete fable one uh it says it'll only open for nostro whom we talked about during last week's episode and peter you were here last during last week's episode what's the problem with the demon door requiring well saying it'll only open for nostro that means that definitely they weren't created that requirement wasn't created in the old kingdom uh, it's, it's because Nostra was like one of the first will users or something like that. So he's but no, he's he came, also dead, is what, he not? He came way later. So he was way he was at he came after the fall of the old kingdom. The spire went off. There was like the uh, the famine wars or the fallow wars, I think they were called, where like seventy five percent of the population died. Then like hundreds and hundreds of years later, Nostra came from uh, the east and sh- and showed up in Albion and was tutored by whom we think what by Scythe, whom we think was uh, William Black. Right, so yeah. since the doors were created in the old kingdom, for sure, like there couldn't have been a door that had to wait for Nostro when it was created in the old kingdom. So the requirement definitely changed at some point. 
What was the name? It was right. the Famine Wars, then the what wars? I, I sorry, I don't Owl? think it was the Famine Wars. I think it was the Fallow Wars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, that what about the familiar, yeah? What about the Phallic Wars, where all the fable people took out their wieners and? and, and <laughs> those, were, those were my those were my favorite of the wars of all wars. Yeah. Those ones were my favorite. Punic War, <laughs> Phallic War. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the requirements for a demon door aren't the only thing that can change, though. Uh, another thing that can change is the topic of this podcast. So uh, we're going to switch to talking about Balverines, but first we're going to take a little break. The first Balverine was born out of the bite of a creature far more terrible, the Balvorn, who dwelt upon this world when gods and demons were still the primary force. When men first started to walk amongst them, the Balvorn would feast on the flesh of thousands at a time. Only once did a human survive such an attack. He became the first Balverine, and his curse has survived to this day. Uh-huh. That is the Balverine legend according to the Snowspire Oracle in Fable of the Lost Chapters. Um, it's, it's basically saying there's like a Dracula werewolf, I guess, <laughs> who's like the, okay, the yeah. original progenitor who kind of spawned... Uh, the the rest of these balverines so i i said it at the top of the episode balverines are essentially werewolves half man half wolf creatures they appear in every fable game uh they're highly feared for their aggressive natures and their ability to infect others with just a bite yeah like the common cold used to kill a hundred percent of people but then there was just one guy who survived it and because of him he passed it on to everybody else <laughs> yeah, yeah. and now we're still stuck with the dang thing comes around get, all the time we have the cold colderine disease yeah, exactly. Wolverine disease. Yeah, I got uh, all yeah. stuffed up on a full moon. And you're like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're like trying to find like, <laughs> like wealthy travelers at a foggy night, so you can like whatever you, you've got like the cut from like the the guy in the at the front of the carriage just gets like swept off. It's like, yeah, what's going on out there, Jeremy? <laughs> Jeremy, and then like a werewolf just like crawls oh, no, through the window of the carriage no, wait, just to sneeze in the old man's face. <laughs> it's, it's, what's what's going on out there, Jeremy? Because he's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go. Everybody is always going like ah 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 choo. That's the moon. Yeah, that's really it's, good. Yeah, it's like the werewolf with the little ice the ice bag and the thermometer in its mouth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it basically just looks like the grandma from uh, that that fairy tale. Red Riding Hood. Red, Red Riding Hood. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. So, um, they're werewolves in the Fable games from the Cancel Game Fable Legends. We actually know where this hero, the the first one to survive Balvorn's attack, the first Balverine where he lies is his body. In fact, it's behind a demon door named Babs. That's the demon door's name, which I thought Aww. was Hello. My name's That's Babs. <laughs> uh, there was, we went to school with an Elizabeth who we used to call Babs. Uh, that was a great cute nickname. That's so cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Fable Legends was a canceled game. It was supposed to be like Fable 4, essentially. It was going to release like a decade, like, I don't know, eight years after Fable 3 or something like that. Uh, it was canceled in 2016 when Lion Hedge shut down. Um, but there was a beta for a while, so so some of the quests were playable. Uh, and in that beta, the hero receives this quest. Uh, the town's market, it seems, has seen an influx of old kingdom artifacts, and the town's archaeologist wants you to investigate some demon doors to see if they're being raided, and that's where the artifacts are coming from. When you arrive, you actually see Balverines and bandits working side by side to guard some treasures behind the first demon door, which is like, like pretty much unheard of in the first Fable game. I think you attack a bandit camp, and then Balverines end up attacking at the same time. If I'm correcting, if, if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, yeah, like, I remember like a ton of, like watching my friends play through what felt like hundreds. And, like you got the impression that Fable had hundreds of demon doors. For me, like it, my impression of watching people play that is the only thing you do is fight Balverines and then Jack of Blades at the end. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like my memory of that game. Uh, yeah, I remember taking so much time to be a good person in that game just to get to the final decision and be like, well, I really want the bad I decision. I want the sword. Though. Yeah, yeah you, get, <laughs> you get like this like almighty powerful sword. And it's like, well, I can't just be a good guy and get the sword. But <laughs> there's, gotta- yeah, I mean, there's it's, it's kind of fucked up. There's like um, there's the morality system, which we talked about last time. There's like one demon door where uh, it needs you to be evil to open it. And the most efficient way to do that is just to get 11 baby chicks and just eat them in front of it. Like, eat, eat them live in front of the demon door. And he's just like, that's fucked up, dude. Here you go. Oh, and like, man. that's you in essentially. Ah, <laughs> oh, those things would pop like grapes in your mouth. That'd be nasty, man. Oh, 
That's so funny. I, I, I was watching some Kenny versus Spenny while I was drawing this weekend and today. And there's one where they have to keep a chicken coop on their head. And obviously, yeah. Kenny is the conniving one. Um, puts just a chick through the cage and then takes the chicken out so he doesn't have to have a gigantic, like, eight-pound live chicken <laughs> shitting next to his face the entire mm-hmm. episode. But at one point, he does have, like, a bunch of them in his closet under a heat lamp and then takes, like, uh, marshmallow peeps and fills them with jam. And it just cuts to him just, like, jamming chicks into his mouth and, like, drooling out a bunch <laughs> of blood. <laughs> Penny vs. Penny is a show that you might not like, but I would recommend checking out their audience. It is It can get very gross, but it's very funny. Yeah, it's Canadian very, show, right? Yeah, yeah, it's in Toronto. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a buddy of um, mine uh, like hangs out with Kenny all the time. He has uh, like video. Kenny Hotz has videos of my buddy's music video on his YouTube channel alongside episodes of Kenny versus Benny, which is pretty cool. Oh, cool. there's there's a demon door uh, named Hots that you have to eat baby chicks to get in or something. Oh yeah, yeah? Exactly. <laughs> you, have, you have to eat uh, marshmallow peep stuff with jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, you go you go to this demon door. You see Balverine's working with uh, bandits. You're like, that's weird. You go back. You talk to the archaeologist about it. Uh, the archaeologist is like, that is weird. Go see. Go investigate the second door. See if you can find anything about that. Like we did find out that they're raiding this demon door for artifacts. Go go keep checking out these demon doors to see if you can figure out anything else. The second demon door that you check out actually uh, tells you the a bit more info on the legend of the the first Balverine. Uh, so it tells us what we already know from the Snowspire Oracle, that there once lived a great and terrible beast known as the Balvorn, who spread terror across the land. That is until one day a mighty hero stood against the monster and slew it. This is Hero Capital H. I think that fucks with the timeline a bit because Hero Capital H is like a thing that came after William Black. But they also talk about this being the time of like gods and demons primarily. I don't know. Would it still um, not, would it not still be like an Archon or one of his kids or something like that? Uh, I So I wouldn't think that the time of the old kingdom would be referred to as the time of like gods and demons. Like I think oh, that yeah. would have been like during the old kingdom is what the snow spire Oracle would have said, but who knows more primordial. <laughs> yeah. So this hero, uh, he's grievously wounded in the fight. That wound curses him, turning him into the first Balverine at least. And the hero manages to not bite anybody before going to hell. Uh, hey. at, at least that should be the end of the Balverine curse, right? Like he didn't bite anybody. Yeah. He just That's died. like a, if you're going to hell anyways and you still don't bite anyone like that's a pretty good guy i gotta say yeah i mean straight yeah. up he was a capital h hero he never um, eats any chicks that's for sure <laughs> yeah. he went to capital Zero. h hell too though <laughs> yeah. well that well that's that's just because he's no longer human he's balverine so he's not allowed to heaven god wouldn't yeah. allow it all uh, balverines go to heaven <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 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 as, as, Sorry, all as, balverines go to hell i guess but yeah, yeah. all dogs go to heaven all balverines go to hell yeah. Uh, so unfortunately not that's not the end of the Balverine curse as we know when they're, what we learned from the door is that when the hero did die they opted not to cremate him which might have been their mistake instead they buried him and where the hero was buried flowers grew around his grave as the flowers fed on his cursed corpse they passed the curse to wanderers who happened to smell them keeping the curse alive that's a uh, very cool idea like yeah, how the, no. the cursed pollen of just like, oi, me love, is a bouquet of daffy deals I stole from the <laughs> graveyard, apparently, as, <laughs> as I was passing. And she's like, oh, he's a lovely. And then, w- like, full moon turns into a balverine and rips him apart. Yeah, exactly. And it's just um, basically a witcher quest. And yeah, my wife's in the cave down there and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh, yeah. I brought yeah, yeah, her yeah. some flowers to excuse me cheating on her with me mistress. And she wandered yeah. off to the caves and she's been real hairy with me these last few days. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you know this good. other woman is your mistress? <laughs> did I? <laughs> I showed her me moon and she just completely changed. I don't know what to say. Um, I so, think that is a... Can you moon someone in that game? Yeah, Maybe you not. can moon, moon people yeah. in the, yeah. okay, in the Fable good. games. Good. Um... So once once the first, I guess, however many people are infected by the flowers, I don't know if the flowers live forever. You can visit the grave. It's behind a demon door, actually, now or always was. Again, I don't know. Um, but you can visit the Balverine's grave, the first Balverine's grave in the game. I don't there's no mention of flowers that I could find anyway. Uh, again, it's from the discontinued fabled uh, legends beta. So not the mm. easiest thing to track that stuff on. Um but people were definitely infected at some point, and it seems the curse just lives on now through the bites. Uh, so it, if you get attacked by a Balverine and they bite you under the light of a full moon, you, uh, you actually want to get bit 
under a full moon, but then also survive, I guess. Uh, but you turn into a white Balverine if you're bit under the light of a full moon. Oh um, yeah, I remember that. That's like a that's like a boss in Fable One. I've seen like friends fight that thing, isn't it? It it's like one of those ones. It's like a boss when it's first introduced. You see like one, and it's kind of like a momentous time, and then then they become a regular enemy like okay. later in the game. Like well, those a regular harder enemy, I guess. Or There's in my... it, should I say? I'm sorry, I mispronounced yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so eventually, uh, a great hero ascends to the throne of Albion and makes it part of their election platform to drive the Balverines out. They're they're okay. No more Balverines in our streets. Um, so they institute Whacking Day, a day to, you know, everyone go, goes out of town with their cudgels and just beats uh, wolves in the forest to death. <laughs> right, uh, right. <laughs> uh, I was very much more thinking of the uh, the St. Patrick thing. Where, yeah. Oh, wait, no, this is That's a different... That's what Whacking Day is based on, though. I mean, yeah, no, but this is, a, again, like a thing that we've already joked about because I remember drawing this. There's like an elf from WoW that drove the werewolves out of the like, cow oh, it was hearthstone it was hearthstone, yeah, yeah yeah there we go okay, okay. it was the uh we talked about the uh worgen uh, yeah the, and he's the like the he's uh the bad the, guy the from Burning Crusade's brother kale thas kale knights kale no the, it's a uh, malfurion was the malfurion it? oh malfurion yeah that is Storm the brother Rage. of yeah. that's the brother of uh yeah. illidan illidan yeah illidan kale, kale thas is also a boss in tbc yeah. uh so yeah this this hero at some point ascends to the throne of Albion, wants to drive all the Balverines out. Uh, does pretty well at some again at some point in history. I'm not sure when this was exactly. Um, from the novel novel, excuse me, fable the, the Balverine the Order. The noble. <laughs> I was reading the word fable, which was right next to novel, and there's oh, okay, too many yeah. too many similar syllables in that one. Uh, from the novel Fable, the Balverine Order by Peter David, which. Congrats on having the most British name possible, dude. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we know we know that currently the heaviest concentration of Balverines is indeed outside of Albion near a city called Sutcliffe. So outside of Albion, but apparently still in Britain because with a name like Sutcliffe. Um, <laughs> uh, so within the walls of this distant city, there rests a large temple. The temple's origin is unknown. Who built it when or originally why is lost to time. Currently, however, it serves as the home for something known as the Balverine Order. Where the, where the book what got its name from? Uh, <laughs> it's the, the moment in the movie where you're like, they, they said it's, this really is an Avengers Endgame. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really is... like the way you put that sentence. Where the book what got its name from? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In, we're in the spirit of like the kind of like lower class British that is used throughout fable, right? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. in the book, book got its name, huh? Yeah. Yeah. This really is an Avengers Endgame, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so the Balverine Order is a collection of Balverines, uh, as you guys might have guessed. Um, much smarter than the average bear, Balverine. Uh, the members of the Order are more sophisticated than the Balverines one meets in the games. Uh, but equally as nefarious. Um, do you guys want to guess what the leader of the Balverine Order, what his name is? You're not going to get it, but I just, I just want to see what you guys would guess. If you guys would get on the right track, at least. It's probably so fucking British, too. Wolfgang. It, it's, it's a good guess. That's the right. That's absolutely the right track. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but Peter, and you're kind of on the right track where you said, oh, that's, it's probably so fucking British. It absolutely is not British. Oh no! Oh damn! Because no. yeah, I was like Lord Badgerbach of the Wolverine of the Wolverine no. <laughs> House or something like Wolverine <laughs> Estate. No, the the Balverine Order is led by an, a man named Lou Garou. Ah, which, which, which creatively is, French is werewolf, werewolf in French. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's it's spelled differently. It's L U G A R U. But hey, we correct. learned a new French word this this weekend. You know, chopsticks or baguettes. Baguettes, French. yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Because uh, we were uh, I, eating Cheetos out of a bag with chopsticks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even Ethan's mom got into it. She was doing the gamer moves with the chips. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so the the Balverine Order's purpose is uh, to subvert the human race as as top dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> they want <laughs> what we all want: power above all else, and are willing to do whatever is necessary to get there. Kind of decided. A walkie is for every man. Yeah, exactly. We are no longer man's best friend. Man's now our best friend or something. <laughs> um, 
so there, there, that, that's the book, the fable, the Bowery in order kind of follows the, this group of like nefarious, like intellectual businessmen, Bowerines who okay. are <laughs> capable of like talking and coordinating and cooperating enough to like have a place in the city built for them. Uh, I feel since- like we have a lot of art with that with like some type of monster dressed up as a businessman. <laughs> I, I don't know. Or at least we've said the idea many yeah. times. It, it feels when, like- <laughs> when in doubt, when in doubt, Pete just, Stuff a monster in a business suit, and yeah, and exactly. Got a, an episode art. Well, I was yeah. trying to think of like their political motivations. It's just like all men deserve walkies according to his needs, or whatever. <laughs> would be like the platform they learn they yeah. they run on. Um. So in in a, another part of the world, in distant Samarkand, which uh, is from another book uh, in the Fable canon, I guess, not from any of the games. That wasn't it's- not France, was it? Did we talk about that? No, it's it wasn't not France. Okay. France we said was the void in the last. The last oh, episode. excuse me, of course, yeah. hey, exactly. Um, Hellish so, rights live in France. Yeah, <laughs> Sam- Samarkand is a country of vast deserts and sweeping dunes, located to the east of Albion. Uh, we have no Balverines, quote unquote, but we have a similar monster known as a Jakala. Okay. Uh, I have a quote from Shan about the Balverines showing up on Samarkand. I remember my father speaking to my mother of something he had found on the outskirts of the city. The body of, of a jackal. It is a sort of dog of the desert. Scavenger. It was not a jackal any longer. So it seems like the uh, the Balverines of Samarkand are more associated with jackals rather than the wolves of Albion. So how that ties into like the Balvorn myth, myth, I don't know. The books are... And again, the, the Fable Wiki is like a mess of... There's no, there's no citations. There, there's no nothing. So... Uh, it, it was really like piecemeal trying to like find these things, find out like what canons are accepted. As far as I could tell, like the books aren't necessarily canon to the game. They're just like greenlit in the universe and nobody who owned the IP, I guess Microsoft at a certain point cared about ensuring that like canon was pristine at the end of it all, yeah. which which is probably fine. But well, they're like um, the two they're like terror, like uh, like regional cryptid. Right. So you've got like the were jackal and then the balverine. Like kind of come from the same sort of like a Sasquatch and a Yeti, or it's just like yeah. it's it's just a snowy Sasquatch, right? Yeah, but yeah, it's just like if we if we know from the Snowspire Oracle and from that Demon Door that the Balvorns were created by the Balvorn, like it did the Balvorn come here as well, and it's kind of the same thing happened where they he, he like extended the curse to one guy who survived, and that guy passed on the curse somehow, or was so it just like was it is it like regional? Like is it the moon in these uh, under above these dunes? You know, transforms you into something different than it would in the forests of Albion or or something like that. You or know? you just like, like I, transform into the local dog, right? Yeah, yeah it's like, regional. It's yeah, yeah. Like, in that, Mexico, it... you turn into a chihuahua. Yeah, I was, I was... <laughs> <laughs> the most the most terrifying Balverine form. I think we can all agree it would be the chihuahua. Yeah. Absolutely. Just, yeah. Yeah. You just yeah. just walk over and kick it immediately. It's like a one hit kill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After seeing Sadie over the weekend, I think that'd be a pretty scary one too. Like a, a old English bulldog, English bulldog or something. Yeah, yeah coming yeah. after you. That'd be terrifying. That, that's, that's regional, right? That's, that's what yeah, the Bay- that, Baileys that, might look like. <laughs> yeah, that would have been that should have been what the uh, the Bal- Balverines and Albion look like. Actually, the Balverines in Fable Legends did look much, actually, a lot more bulldog like. They had much like okay. shorter shouts. They were they they were like proto Balverines. I believe uh-huh. it's it's set as a prequel or was going to be set as a prequel that canceled Fable Legends. Don't um, worry, love. It's all jowls and no boy. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's when you get like bulldog drool on you during yeah, a full moon. That's that's how you <laughs> that's how it gets transferred. Yeah, because I think there are no wolves left in England. I think there was like a recent thing where some fucking environmentalist was like, "We need to reintroduce starving wolves to the forests of England." And a lot of people were like, "No, I don't think we do." Actually, <laughs> I mean they're important. There's there's like a great. Um... Is there a deer problem in England? I don't think there's uh, like any wildlife left on that fucking island. Is there? There's, there's definitely deer in England. I don't know if there's a deer problem. There's definitely a lot of rabbits. Not like um, New Jersey, they have a white-tailed deer problem. Yeah, yeah. So the the Balverines in in Fable Legends actually had like much shorter shorter snouts. I thought the most interesting thing, like you can find the first Balverine's grave, right? It's behind the Demon Door. Um, that that's telling you the the legend of him essentially. And so there's, mm-hmm. I, I've seen the art asset, and they, I I don't know, like if this was in his will or not, but like they decorated his grave to look like a Balverine. I was like, damn, this guy really like want to be remembered as like <laughs> the, the monster, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> he know. got into it right yeah just yeah really leaned into it i guess i don't know i always yeah. imagine them as being like kind of stouter because obviously varine is like the suffix wolverine right 
So I always imagine them as much like heavier because they're like kind of brown and brown and beige and right. And they're like kind of a stockier little badger monster, yeah. which, again, is a much more British animal, like a smaller predatory animal. Above yeah, so the, the wolf, the name Balverine comes from uh, there's these brothers and I think their last name was Stout, uh, who they're both developers on the game and like designers and like pretty, pretty big in the, the creative department and creating the games. Uh, they came up with the Balverines and they came up with the name because uh, in London, there's a place called Balverney Grove, which they just like misread a sign one time and read it as Balverine. And that's where they got <laughs> the name Balverine from. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you think a pirate lives in there? Uh, it's private. Um. Yeah, I posted you guys a picture of a of a Fable Legends Balverine if you want to look at kind of the kind of the difference, but more more bulldog like I think more British bulldog like. I mean, it doesn't even have a nose. It, it looks know, kind yeah. of it's it's much much scarier than like a werewolf would be. It's kind of like a human face with no nose and like sharp wolf teeth, and yeah. then it's got the hairy mane like a werewolf would. Yeah, yeah exactly. scarier certainly. Yeah, and they kind of look like um some of the some of the pictures too, and I, I'm not sure which games like these ones are from, but sometimes they kind of look like bat faces. Like the the short snout with like the upturned nose a little bit. Uh, and I oh one. yeah, okay. Have you guys there? Yeah. Um. Anyway, so in in Fable: Edge of the World by Christy Golden, where we learn about this country called uh, Samarkand and Christy Golden. Didn't she write WoW books? I mean, I'm gonna guess if you wrote a fucking uh, Fable book, you you get to yeah. She wrote Star Wars books, WoW books. Uh, she wrote a bit about uh, Sylvanas. Looks like she wrote in Ravenloft in Dragonflight. So also some D and D books. I'm pretty sure the Arthas episode I did was based on the Christy Golden book. Oh, yeah. There you I'm go. Sure. Right to the show, Christy Golden. Let's get her on the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It'd, be a, it'd be a good one. Um, so yeah, the, the king in, in this book, Edge of the World, uh, the king of Albion takes his royal army to Samarkand to fight an enemy known as the Darkness, kind of the, the big bad guy of the, of the book. <laughs> I believe in a thing called love. <laughs> 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 Traversing the desert isn't easy, though, as the the Brits would learn. And the king takes some bad advice from a, a bad faith actor uh, to stop at some nearby wells in the desert. The waters were tainted by the darkness, and overnight, 200 men are transformed into Jakala. So Whoa. again, it, it really doesn't seem to be the blood of the person transforming it. It does seem to be the, the area or the region because they're transformed into Jakala somehow. Yeah, there's like some um, kind of regional dog plague that turns people into <laughs> their local werewolf. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so like, again, how that ties back to the original origin myth of the Balvorn or remains to be seen or, or well, it could be like uh, something that it has interactions with like the local fauna and stuff. It could have something to do with the plants. Yeah. 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 Who knows? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this does, as good. far as like a, if I want to uh, just push up my glasses a little bit here, as far as like a, if it's like a virus, right? Like some modern zombie movies. If it's like a virus in nature that turns people into werewolves, if it, it the fact it evolves in like the local dog kind of makes sense, right? Like it <laughs> would adapt to its surrounding. Right. So what about what's that movie children children of men it's like no no like there's a bunch of people who can have kids you're just not in new jersey like, <laughs> <laughs> like the entirety of children of men takes place in new jersey and it's like nobody no wonder nobody's having kids there right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it, children of actually, jersey is a very tragic film my wife my wife has friends from new jersey and we saw them over the holidays and they gave us the fun fact that uh, new jersey is actually the most expensive state to have a kid in like for oh. the for the hospital visit Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh on, average, sorry, the, that, that... on average, the hospital cost, it costs the highest in New Jersey. So the two, yeah. the my two only experience... the logic I need to make in my skull is paying <laughs> to have a baby, which is insane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my only experience with the New Jersey hospital system is I watched The Sopranos recently and a lot of people end up there. Yeah. So, yeah, it can get into the water. It can transform like a bunch of people just for drinking the water. It seems like still even like after the original infection of this uh this hero who who defeated the Balvorn or Jakala are actually different and are just similar to Balvorn. Who knows? Um or there's so multiple I, viruses that can turn you into dogs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah could be. Uh so in either the original well, or either Fable Anniversary Edition or the original Fable, I, I wasn't sure which, there's an Easter egg that if you kill 1019 guards in the <sighs> town of Oakvale uh, without <laughs> leaving the town, like without leaving and coming back, like just not reloading the instance, which takes about seven hours if you do it without a cheat engine. 
uh, white Valverines start to spawn in the place of the guards because the guards will just oh, keep responding. Wow. Uh, and white Valverines start to spawn in their place. Uh, I Is only that saw, on purpose? I only the 1019 or uh, or the Valverines like like I did the devs put that in or is it just like it leaks over like some weird memory thing like if you kill enough it just forgets there's what a, to spawn like there's a ton of um there's a ton of easter eggs in the fable games I'm gonna guess that it is like you say this one was uh, an accident this wasn't an intentional yeah. easter egg um because I couldn't find mention of it from like any developer or anything like that. Like I couldn't find any quotes, whereas okay. a lot of the other Easter eggs they will like talk about or, or speak to. Um, I only saw people do, do this in the anniversary edition. I saw a lot of people use cheat engines just to like speed up the guard respawn. Like yeah. basically they right. kill, kill all the guards for, for to your point though, like 2024 is like the magic number, right? I don't know if there's five guards in Oakvale. So maybe you kill 1019 because like five are already spawned or something like that. You know, right, we'll get right. to that 1024 like integer overflow whatever yes, that's the thing um, yeah okay. um so yeah I, I i don't know is the is the short answer but it, it happens uh i'm not sure if it exists in the original like i said i only saw people do it in the anniversary edition though i'm pretty sure it, like from what i can see it i'm pretty sure it does what i also thought maybe was that this was the oh if you uh you know beat the uh, at least four 100 times and then go to the <laughs> truck outside your your starting home you'll get a level 150 muck or whatever like a childhood oh, yeah. a, a child right. a playground rumor which maybe existed in the first one that oh if you kill a, a thousand guards in oakvale uh they'll start spawning as white balverines which was <laughs> circulating and then for the anniversary edition maybe they were like oh because that's circulating we'll put it into the anniversary edition yeah. I, I don't know I don't know. Did I ever Did tell you... the story that when I was a kid and I was petty and there's the one kid who was going to beat Pokemon Silver and Gold before me? Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I told him we went through all of Victory Road and pressed down B on every single square the whole way through that it would unlock something. So I just basically <laughs> sent him on a, on a chicken chase yeah. while I was able to try and get through the Elite Four before. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I forgot about that. That is great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love those playground rumors. Those were so much fun. Like pre playing video games before the internet was great, and no yeah, one will absolutely. ever get to experience that ever again. Which is and, and I will say in in looking up this specific that specific fact about the the guards in Oakville, I ended up on so many like forums from 2006 where people are like <laughs> asking about it. You know what I mean? And like just like yep. clearly clearly. 11 year olds who who said that they were 13 to get access to the forum of course. Are, are posting on these these things in 2006 you know like yeah. uh yeah. It, w- it was a blast from the past like trolling through these forums trying to see if this is fucking real or not every um, new year's baby from 1901 asking how to kill a thousand balverings right yeah, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> that's a fun thing about classic wow is like it, anytime you look up a quest all of the comments from 2009 are still up there yeah. or the ones from 2006 when it was classic classic wow yeah. and you get to see the like how people experience it in real time yeah. um so yeah uh you can spawn all the you can start spawning white bal- balverines they're stronger than regular white balverines which means that if you go through this seven hour process of killing all these guards you can <laughs> then uh they'll replace the summon spe- in your summon spell if you summon a white you can summon a white balverine if you've defeated oh. one and you can summon the stronger variant once you've killed these uh, okay, these cool. guard white balverines, essentially. Wow. So twitch.tv slash the lore boys. Jamie's got the game installed. He's going to be doing oh, this next God. week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seven hour stream to get the white balverines. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, I was like, oh, how fun would it be to do like a let's play of the Fable trilogy, right? Like, and just like, yeah. just like casual playthrough of all three of them. But Jamie, it sounds like we're not going to do that. You're going to have to grind the Oakvale guards until we can spawn <laughs> white balverines. Yeah, we, we changed uh, the plan. Sorry, dude. I've been yeah. having troubles with my computer lately in terms of my how internet convenient. drops out whenever <laughs> I play uh, games for whatever reason. I just get internet drops. Out. But I have been saving my lore bucks from the patrons. So maybe it's time to upgrade, you know? It's time to build a PC, screen. dog. Yeah. We've been saying yeah. get glasses, build PC, or your New Year's resolutions. Please get, okay? please get glasses. Yeah, yeah the glasses, <laughs> are, those glasses are the big one. I got my uh, prescription right here. So. Anytime I need it. By the right time here. you order your fucking glasses, your prescription is going to have changed, dude. Like, you went in August. Gee, oh, that's <laughs> true. Holy shit. Oh, uh, yeah. What are we? Oh, we're January, January the following year. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> when really? are we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you can spawn these Balverines in the place of guards. If you pay your fine, the Balverines become friendly. Uh, making them the only friendly white balverines in the game. They talk like guards, and they can take their union-mandated smoke breaks. That's incredible. Uh, 
in the game <laughs> in the games balverines only attack with their claws never a bite attack making it so there's never a chance to get infected for the hero Mm. apparently player infection and transformation was originally on the table like it was originally planned for the first game but was scrapped when the developers realized that the balverine controls sucked oh. <laughs> they're just like feels bad to play this so let's not make it a thing and take out all the bite animations from the balverine attacks look, look at these guys realizing their controls couldn't hold up and then it, whatever eight years later skyrim is just like man these controls suck dick anyway you're a well you're a werewolf now yeah, yeah. uh and one one final fact for for the show today uh maybe the 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 best one for some people and the worst one for others uh balverine's got titties because there's a there's a type of cheese in game called howling cheese with the description made with balverine milk just one more reason not having a nose can be an advantage in life so you can milk i got nipples greg can you milk me and it's robert de niro Uh as a fucking werewolf sitting at the table (laughs) (laughs) it would probably have like dog nipples where like like the third the the six little ones or i don't know how many like how far does the transformation go right because you're transforming from a human so does it does it keep your original number of nipples do you grow two more you go all the way to six i don't know Oh yeah! If you are already yes, a woman, like you? It, they probably wouldn't take away your titties. But would it be so, like the John Carpenter practical effects, like in like the like a uh, American Werewolf in London, where it's just got like the tits, like kind of like stretching down, then a second one, then like four, and then like stretched down <laughs> again, and then six, like that kind of rubbery practical effect that was really like cool a, in the eighties. Like 80s. a set of blinds, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the it's blind kind of nipples. <laughs> Uh, blind nipples. <laughs> I need to put up my nipple curtains, honestly. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's Balverine and, and Demon Doors lore. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show, enjoyed the tidbits, enjoyed the, the goofiness and the gags and the goofs that we had along the way. True, true happiness is the goofs we made along the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you guys want to support the show, uh, you guys can leave us a review on your podcast app of choice. Uh, iTunes, leave us a five star review would be great. Uh, and just tell your friends to help us continuing to grow the show. We don't pay to advertise the show anywhere, so word of mouth is the only way we get around. So uh, post it on your social media if you're if you're comfortable doing that, uh, and let people know about about the show. Jamie, yes. what's going on, man? How, how are you doing these days? I'm doing pretty good. If you get in the Discord, you can hang out with me. Uh, we, honestly, come talk to me about fingerboarding. I just got some uh, we're new gonna pants. Make a, we're going to make a fingerboard voice channel and a fingerboard text channel, yeah. I think, where uh, we could talk about uh, tech deck skills. Yeah. yeah yeah definitely uh you can bring your finger bmx's i'm kind of think finger scooters are lame but you know i proved me wrong prove <laughs> no me wrong. finger razor is really yeah no. well it depends on your fit i guess like maybe if you got the right fit and you got some cool tricks but you like anyways like, hit yourself yeah. in the finger shin and it's like yeah. ah, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well at breakfast the next day uh we watched a guy like training with his hands like he had little oh, weights yeah. and he was doing like bench presses like like everything <laughs> yeah. so yeah yeah get me into in the fingerboarding I'm, I'm trying to get my hands into shape um I, I land uh, a 360 flip once in, so I'm pretty much a professional now. Yeah, I would you land a 360 like option of it once. A yeah. private channel that everyone can see that is just called fingerboarding, and a private voice channel that everyone can see just called fingerboarding, and we have some like totally obscure demon door riddle to get people into the fingerboarding <laughs> channel. <laughs> it's just like people constantly trying to try how like how do I get into the lore boys tech tech channel, dude? Like how the yeah. fuck do I do it? Once you get in, just forums from 2006 is where you get your answers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First, we have to go back in time. time. That's the, that's the yeah tough one. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, if you guys want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description uh, of this episode. Peter, <laughs> what's going on in the art world these days, huh? At Lord Boys Podcast on Instagram, uh, we changed our merch. One guy named Tony emailed us saying that he could not access it through the link on the website because I cannot figure out how to fucking change the link on theloreboys.com or loreboys.com. But the link to the merch will be below this episode as well if you want to buy some stuff. We sold a lot over the holidays because there was a sale, which is great. Thank you very much. And I hope... It's comfortable and uh, like with anything with a print on it. I do this all the time. Wash it inside out. You just you did get a couple extra months out of it, right? It just survives. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything, anything with prints. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and then, yeah, I've been getting a lot of comic work done. I'm going to be taking some time off work soon to get even more done. So that is proceeding nicely. Hopefully we'll have some new stuff available as well. I'm not sure what I want to release. I haven't decided yet, but uh, yeah, just uh more fish, more guns, more lore boys nonsense. And uh, thank you, everybody. And what Ethan was saying about the word of mouth, we're going to hit a million downloads real goddamn soon, which is Not crazy. That. 
So you guys are already working overtime on the whole recommending it to your friends and family thing, but uh, yeah. we just need a little bit, a little extra push, okay? Just a little bit of recommending Lore Boys crunch time, and then I promise there's no more crunch, then we'll outlaw yeah. it. Yeah. Back, back to the social media sweat mines. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, we're at a four-day recommend the Lore Boys week, uh, yeah. and we'll have a <laughs> yeah. union and all that shit. Exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and if you guys want to support the show financially, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Lore Boys. Uh, we'll, we'll read your name at the top of the show. We'll uh, give you access to the boner content, um, which is bonus audio that we release every week. You guys will get to play in the, the loser titles game that we play on Discord every week as well, if you guys want to. Um, so yeah, just click the link in the description below if you're interested in supporting the show. Like and have extra have 40 minutes, week. extra 40 <laughs> minutes this week because we all hung out over the, the weekend and had a lot to talk about. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for anyone who doesn't trust uh, the Fat Cats at Patreon, we of course have Lord Boys Prime, which we've always offered. Pretty sure we did it before Patreon did, before it was cool. Uh, oh, yeah. But in this week, I mean, we're we're working on uh, some some podcaster cheese, as we're calling it. We're calling it howling, howling into the uh, internet abyss cheese, all right. uh, which we all, we all have nipples. You can milk us, Greg, and uh, we're going to be sampling some of our different our different man cheeses, if you will. Uh, <laughs> for the, the, what? Well, what's gross about it? It's a natural <laughs> bodily function, okay? And, yeah. and it, it sours great. I have a nice uh, heady aroma to mine. Uh, very, very distinct. A uh, little bit of blueness to it. Some, For your fit- uh, those fitness kids, I give you some very good. You can make some very excellent, like, all-natural yeah. Greek yogurt. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's uh-huh. uh, it's it pairs well with a white. Uh, white wine is what you're going to want to pair with my cheese, personally. So, oh, uh, okay, if, if you guys, if you guys are interested in, in sampling our cheeses, as it were, uh, just uh, <laughs> check out Lord Boys Prime. And mine uh, tastes like truffles, and uh, the the women who can fit through that door are always try and find them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Jamie's pairs really well with a, a nice uh, log of salami. <laughs> the, the pairing for Jamie's cheese, so the recommended pairing, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Um, and I think on that note, uh, that would constitute a lore boys, lore boys, lore boys. Out. Um, happy new year. Out. Yeah. So they, they don't make pressure washers to do that they make <laughs> they make drills to do that yes like you can't you can make a beam of water powerful enough to do that but my dad my dad had a pretty big gas powered pressure washer and i heard that as a child and absolutely tried it several times and like against against the skin yeah again against the skin is not enough to, to do it